anyway, so it took a little bit, but we got the Q and A thing working because a friend of mine was awesome and let me on to this thing, which is worlds better than Google Hangouts, which got canceled a week before us planning to use it for this. So I am Admin Ty. I'm Evan Crow. Either uh, one. I'm <laughs> oh, we did it the time. <laughs> I'm you Summer. <laughs> and I am Admin Salem. Okay. <laughs> Great start. I love it. In case you forget, we have handy little titles here. So um, we have everything prepared. We don't really, this is a, our first time, so be gentle with us. It just doesn't go well. If some of you watch this live, you can comment on the YouTube thing and we will see it in here. So we'll be good there. And I'm going to be editing this for people to watch later, like with actual graphics of what we talked about. So it's a little bit more informative. But without further ado, there was a certain question that I wanted to start with. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> where <laughs> is it? OK, so oh, other thing, if I butcher your name, I apologize. Christian Cervantes asked a couple of questions, like, why can't we see Willow? When are <laughs> everybody pretty much going to apologize for Ozma from the past? When is Blake going to tell Weiss about her father being responsible for stuff with Faunus and like dark flashbacks? We don't have information <laughs> like that. So like about the only one of those that we could answer is possibly the Stark one because we didn't even have an animation of summer until the last episode of this last volume. So for future preference, if it's something we literally can't answer, it's not because we don't want to answer you. We legitimately can't. We're not Rooster Teeth. <laughs> we, we wish we were affiliated with Rooster Teeth, but we are not. We are just a fan page. <laughs> We're just a bunch of dorks. So, but I will say the one fan reason why we can't see Willow is that it's attributed that she's possibly drinking wine in her garden. So <laughs> <laughs> that's all speculation. Speculation. That's all we can really do. <laughs> so, all right. Now on to the questions that we can actually answer. So there is one fun one. I'll start. The fun one from Natalie Smith. Do any admins have a secret or impossible ship? Me and Crow really didn't have an answer right away, so we're thinking. Do either of you two have an answer? Ooh. So how are we, in regards to defining a secret impossible ship, um, I if we're going off of the top of secret and impossible, most of my ships are not a secret because I ship almost everything within a legal standpoint. Um, <laughs> nice. I, I do not ship illegal ships. Um, but as for an impossible one, an impossible one that I'm going to probably name is Ilya and Coco. Okay. All uh, right. There, and I, I say it's impossible because one, they haven't met. That's the main reason. Oh, okay, why I got gotcha. you. Okay. Um, I think that was the the it would be yeah, interesting if they met at a later point because I think it would be intriguing. But until then, it's impossible because they just haven't met. All right. We got one, Summer. Funny enough, she actually listed one, uh, Glinda <laughs> and Salem, for me. <laughs> Yes. Oh, nice. <laughs> I can't find this anywhere. I wanted to post it when I first became an admin, but there's a really funny picture of Salem and Glinda together having like tea. And it's just I know best. which one you're talking about. Yes, that one. It's like the only thing I've seen of them two together. And it's the idea is funny to me because they kind of have like this similar vibe almost. They're both serious and all that. But, you know, as we got to know Salem, she's kind of childish. And that just makes it funny for, like, Linda to be the, like, reasonable one in that relationship. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. I'm having <laughs> – the thing that I'm going to mention, I have a good feeling that's probably going to be half of what he mentions because it's his <laughs> favorite ship. But mine, I've always had a sweet spot for. It'll never happen. 
except in my fan fiction dreams is Mercury and Yang. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. So yeah, it's always just there's it sparked from one really dumb, cute picture of him sitting in his lap. It I can't think of who the artist is, but they've drawn a bunch of stuff. And then it just started off with they're both really cocky and just so it fit. And just imagining them arguing on dates, but that's just how they regularly talk to me, I get a kick out of. So can I guess yours or do you have one? You can guess it. I just now remembered what it was because I don't consider my big OTP to be an impossible ship per se, but Yang and Neo. You are wrong because that was my main OTP. <laughs> ah, oh, yeah, that's right. That is your main one. Sorry, yeah, go no, ahead. I'm going to go with, uh, solely based off of a single piece of fan art, is uh, Neo and Coco. Yes! <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, that that's a good one. Well, what, would, what would that be called? They're giving sass and kicking ass. Uh, I don't know what they would call it. Give me a second. Give me a second. I got the chart. I got the chart. Okay, that would be... I suppose everything with her ends up with being ice cream and then Coco's chocolate. So that makes sense. Is, isn't there an ice cream brand that has a bunny? Well, that dog, like yeah, that? Blue Bunny. Blue, blue Bunny. But I mean, that would be more velvet, I would think. Blue bunny or something. Oh, good is point. There anything, is there any ice cream that has a Gatling gun for a low? I'm not sure if we look long enough. <laughs> All right. Oh, I can't think. Uh, okay. Chart uh, is uh, loading. Uh, and the ship name for Neo and Coco. Oh, the ship chart. Yes, they, they will can find this out. The ship chart. The primary ship name is Chocolate Sunday, but our alternative is Fudge Sunday. I sense. like Fudge Sunday. Fudge Sunday would work. Mm hmm. All right. So, since we picked one, we'll just go in alphabetical order. Salem, you can pick one now. Okay. Do, 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 do. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, Summer, why don't you go ahead? Me? Oh, uh, I was not prepared for this. Sorry, I accidentally no! closed the Q&A when I oh, pulled the big on. part. Where is it? It's this top one. I'm not even going to attempt saying the name, but it's like the top one here. There's a lot I'll of be putting the question underneath it, so the name okay. will be there. Don't worry. Okay, cool. There's a lot of toxicity. Wow, I can't talk. Surrounding OCs, fan art, or fanfic, especially when they're shipped with someone from canon. Example, OC X Pira ship. My question would be, what are your opinions about them? Well, they're the worst. No. <laughs> <laughs> Coming from people that are currently writing a fan fiction that, not joking, if we started listing, probably has 60 OCs in it. <laughs> it comes down to, from what I've noticed, because we've gotten fan art drawn of them, it just comes to, your... <laughs> I'm trying not to be childish. I'm trying not to be childish. <laughs> your character's crap because Miles and Carrie didn't write it. So therefore, it don't matter how much thought you put into it, if it's not canon, it's crap. But if I came up with it, it'd be really cool. That's what it... I hit my thing. It's all right. That's what it's pretty much come down to from what I've noticed. If it's not canon, it's dumb. They don't have a reason. They'll just basically look at it. And we've gotten the comment where it's like, well, read the first line that it has OCs in it. Not worth reading. I don't want to see garbage characters mixed in with the originals. I'm like, so you just know they're garbage because they're OCs? Little piece of information. And oh, see, it's the same thing as an original character, just someone else came up with it. <laughs> True. Goes the dynamite. Just saying. That's my opinion. I mean, I'm on the Thai boat or ship or train or whatever you want. <laughs> on the Thai train. Victory. Yeah. On the Thai train. Oh, you can't see that hand. Uh, anyway, because, uh, it, it yeah, no, I mean, we're, like you said, we're writing the um, fan fiction together. Uh, no shameless plug here. Uh, but anyway, yeah, no, and it's there's tons of uh, OCs in this current um, fan fiction. I don't have any problem with people's OCs. I think, you know, it's interesting what people come up with. Um, yeah, and I mean, we've gotten good comments, too. We had one guy who said he likes uh, more so seeing how the OCs interact with the original characters um, than, you know, just the OCs interacting with each other. But, you know, as you do. Sounds fair. Um, I have no real opinions when it comes to OCs because I feel like they can be written rather well. 
for what I've encountered. Um, the only thing that is a slight pet peeve I have, is, and granted, this is debatable on how one goes about it. It's when people change how certain characters would react in certain situations. Like, say we have a fic that where we have an OC that's partnered up with Yang. And okay. Okay. Yang states that the ideal place she would like to go to on a date is like a tea party. That's, okay. that's, my, that's, that's fair. And that's my only thing as far as like, and I haven't seen a lot that are specific like that. I'm not naming an example. If there is an example, I apologize. <laughs> Um, Cancel the fanfic now. <laughs> but no, um, I I don't have any issues with OCs because they can be rather wit written well, and having different ideas and concepts can be intriguing to see. Got any okay. opinions? Oh, <laughs> uh, so I do OC canon pairings a lot and a lot of stuff I am just into. I think like my early days of Devon are I joined like two OC canon groups. Mm -hmm. So this would be my whole opinion. In general, it's all fiction. You really have the freedom to do what you want. True. If you honestly like you, this character and you feel you can make a character that would be a good companion for them, I say go for it. It's kind of fun to be like, what type of character would they want to date? What could mm -hmm. my character do that would complement this canon character? Would they get along? Would they be childhood friends? Would they have met like a meet cute situation? It's honestly just what I say when it comes to fan art too. Uh, you kind of have the artistic license to do whatever you want. And that's the fun part about art. It's your blank canvas. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. I can I agree with that. I think we nailed that one to the wall pretty good. <laughs> All right. You ready for one, Salem? Yep. I got one. Um, right. This one is from Jake Carroll. What will Ozpin's future hold? Will he be cast mm -hmm. aside as untrustworthy, or will he get a redemption arc of sorts? And my answer for this one is I would like to think that he will be redeemed um, about the whole thing that happened in Volume 6. I understand why he kept things a secret, but at the same time, it's one of those things where if he had told part, like, the truth, it would have saved a lot of time. Um, right now, I kind of get the feeling that he will be redeemed, and... I'm hoping that redemption happens before the merge occurs between him and Oscar. That's the only thing I have about that. And the only reason I mention that is because with Oscar having a new outfit that's more of a green variety, it makes me wonder if the merge is slowly happening right now as we speak. Okay. But only time will tell. Yeah, that's true. I really... <laughs> The, the whole Ospin thing was something I've never put an incredible amount of thought to because it's gonna, I just don't want, to, I just, I will go, I could go into great detail, but it's, there's something that the CW does a lot with almost every show they have that I don't want to get into. And I'm hoping that doesn't happen here. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I just, it, it'll be, they'll have the moments because they need to have the moments. It's just, have it last as long as it needs to. Don't draw it out for the need of needing to have mm -hmm. black and I, I think I think it will be. I'll answer in a later question going on later the exact form of what this is, but yes, I do think I'll get one. Short answer because mm -hmm. I'll be saying more on that with a different question. Uh, before we continue, we've got a question here in the comments. Whoa. Uh, we are talking about the show Ruby. If you stumbled here by accident, um, if you stumbled here by our page on the uh, Facebook, um, yeah, we're just talking about some questions we were asked earlier this week on Facebook. So glad to have you. Yeah. Hey, Welcome. Ryan. I'm glad you're paying attention. I need to make that bigger. I am blind as a bat. Uh, so anyway, to answer the question, do I think uh, it's going to be redeemed? Um, I, I'd like to think so. Uh, I think he'll do what he came to do. I mean, I kind of, I feel like the direction of the show 
Well, actually, you know, after last season, I'm not really sure <laughs> per se what the overall direction of the show is. I would think that they're going to use Ruby's eyes, spoilers, uh, to somehow <laughs> purge the evil out of Salem. But, I mean, it's hard to say. Uh, what? <laughs> Remember how I said I was going to save my answer for later? You just keep going. Fine. <laughs> anyway, but, uh, no, I'd like, to think, I'd like to think he'd get a redemption. I'd also like to think that he wouldn't end up. Uh, I would also like to think that he wouldn't end up merging with Austin. I would like to think that they would fix, rectify things before that happens. But mm-hmm. who can, who, how can we know? Okay, um, one second. Ryan Keaton, I have friends I can join and we can talk about something. Are you down? You can talk about what we're talking about in the comments. If yeah, you if want you want to ask Ruby related questions in the comments, I guess we could kill some of those. Yeah, if it gets yeah. down to it, for sure. If you got opinions, go nuts. I got no problem with that. All right. Crow, I will scroll for you, Betty. I'm gonna pick a question. Selection. Wait, what about Summer? Oh, oh yeah. crap! I'm so sorry. <laughs> Summer, go ahead. I mean, I know oh. she's six feet under, guys, but she's right here. Ah, uh, you probably had fair. something to do with it, so I wouldn't talk. Be fair. I'm five, I'm five foot three. I'm not that short. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, uh, that'll be under two. So so I won't go too far. Under. I won't go too far either because of a later question in here, but let me reread it really quick. I kind of have to go with like what Ty said. I do think he is going to get redeemed. I just don't know exactly how that's going to happen. I know that a lot of people have pointed out how his whole fear of people knowing that Salem can't be beat will make them lose hope in doing it which you did kind of see Weiss mention it in the following episode, but you could also argue that could be because of the way they got that information. Maybe if he was up front with them, they could have processed that all better. Mm-hmm. Cause we know how these characters are considering all the white thing stuff in the first three volumes when they were like, had no idea what they were doing. They still went and did it. Yeah. And I'm, I'm waiting on the clarifier later on where they very specifically said, how do I defeat Salem? You can't. Yeah, I think that was pretty Same here. And- Same here. <laughs> Especially because Jin is based off of a Jin. Mm-hmm. They word things very specifically to screw you over. <laughs> yep. If anyone is, well, it's, they, they, it's a little bit different on Supernatural, but there's a very good representation of a Jin on Supernatural. Mm-hmm. But, uh, Anyway, um, we'll get to that, Ryan, in a second. We're going to get through a couple more. But if it's more Ruby-related, we'll probably get to it. Just letting you know. After we're through Ruby questions, we might get through the other stuff, bud. Okay? Thanks, buddy. Okay. Um, now, Crow, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> um, um, okay, we did that one. We did that one. That one. Let's go with favorite ship and least favorite ship. Just, you know, just for the kicks and giggles. You want me to start us or you want to start us? Sure, I need to think of my least favorite. I have my favorite. Um, wow, I'm at a hello pop drop. Um, thanks for joining us again. This yeah. is a Ruby related Q&A for the admins of um, Remnant's Finest on Facebook. Um, so anyway, least favorite ship and favorite ship. Uh, my favorite ship is obviously Baked Alaska. I <laughs> I, I don't consider it impossible. I do, you know, especially have a crack ship, obviously. But yeah, um, yeah it, it won't happen. But that's cool. It, it, uh, it's anyway, in an alternate reality. I just, yeah, I just like the dynamic. I don't know, it's fun. Um, mm-hmm. no. as far as my least favorite, uh, I don't know. I'm probably go with enabled. Just, you know, <laughs> I I can agree with that. <laughs> just, you know, as far as uh, I don't know, I guess. As far as I don't know. As far as non incestual yeah, ships as, go. As far as, as, as non incestual ships go, um, I guess I don't know if I really have a least favorite. Some of the I like some of the really crazy crack pairings I don't get sometimes, like people ship like uh, first mate with Penny and whatnot. I guess I wouldn't call that my least favorite. I just don't see it. But uh, that could be an impossible ship. Yeah. It could. Like that's like pilot boy and Weiss. That's oh. another good one. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> he's dead. Yeah, great, it's screen time. Uh, anyway, <laughs> that's all it needs. Obviously. Um. 
you guys go. I literally have to come up with a least favorite ship. I have a really easy, stupid, easy answer that's canon, but go. Okay. I can't think of one. I think um, one. as far as as I mentioned before, I mm -hmm. ship almost a little bit of everything. If you can pitch it and you can make a good argument for it. Even if it's in a crack sort of way, I'm more than willing to ship it to a degree. Um, as I mentioned before, no illegal ships. Um, least favorite, and this is just one that I don't see often, but when I see it, it's like, that's wrong, because I don't see that, that dynamic in a romantic sense. I'm not a huge fan of people who ship Ruby with Uncle Crow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I I, 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 I didn't think of that one. <laughs> but they have an uncle and a niece dynamic. You shouldn't be shooting the two together to begin with. That is true. Wow, I didn't think of that. You got one, Summer? Do you want me to go? I can throw my two out quickly. Um, uh, I can be. I can go. Uh, so I'm like Salem. I kind of ship a lot of things within certain boundaries. Uh, I will literally ship the same character with multiple people. Like yep. King Stark, I literally will ship Summer with Crow, Ty, and Raven. But I think oh, I kind of favor Crow and Winter just because of that dynamic thing. The bird! Yeah. Like, I really just enjoy that whole fight of him egging her on because it's just hilarious to me. And any artwork that shows him just smiling with her getting mad at him is like, yes, yes. give me mm -hmm. more of that. Oh, yeah. My mm -hmm. least favorite ship, now this is more like not a ship I hate, just it's not one of my top ones. Like, ooh, I love this every time, but I still like it. Um, I'm not too big on the sea monkeys. I think they're cute as a ship, but it's not like one of my top ones. Okay. It's probably like okay. bottom tier. But that's probably just because I do generally just love them being the goofy friends. Mm -hmm. I just love Neptune thinking he's like the coolest thing ever and him yeah. still surprising Sun like the whole you're scared of water. Yeah, that is great. <laughs> um, I, I, I could see that. Yeah. My, it, it, it's likely never going to change. I don't know whatever hit it to make me like this so much, but it's crosshairs with Coco yeah. and Velvet. It, it'll it'll never change. That that's why when Coco was uh, revealed, I was just like, "Don't don't do that to me. Don't don't tease me." <laughs> give me hope. <laughs> yes, it's pretty much Hawkeye Adventures. Don't give me hope. <laughs> okay, uh, I was watching that just before this, so that's really funny. <laughs> yeah, but uh, my least favorite, like again, if we're not gonna go with, it's just any what. Blake and Adam, just because it's manipulative. Oh yeah, I I can agree with that. And um, it, it's a real cop out answer, but no, nah, it's fine. Um, I think like I nah, it. I mean, we've all picked some pretty logical reasons as far as like sh why what's our favorite and what's our least favorite. Um, but yeah, I, I think it just varies. Um, I, although one crack that I do enjoy that I saw very briefly and never saw it again was someone on Tumblr made a suggestion. Now, here's the logic behind this one, even though they've never met. Okay. Why don't why don't we ship Tyrion with Roman Torchwick? Oh, no. <laughs> I wait patiently for... Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so what brought up was someone someone made a point about how Roman was the the equivalent villain for Ruby at the start up until Roman vanished. And then the other thought behind it was Tyrion kind of took that and filled the role. Okay. <laughs> because Roman. Roman was working for Cinder, Tyrion works for Salem. So then if they had worked together and because of the fact that they're both kind of filling that role, why not ship each, why not the, t why not ship the two together? And that was a post that I saw on Tumblr and then I never saw it again because I wished I would have screenshot it because that would have been funny. But think thinking in my head now of the, 
banter about doing chores and the banter of pillow talk between those two is hilarious and terrifying. So <laughs> See, that's what my thought was. God, <laughs> no. and Harry and just kind of snuggling with Roman, like in the creepiest tone, but po sweet talking to him. And then both trying to be after, basic. After meeting, uh, after meeting Tyrion's voice actor, Josh Brown, that would be hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> and trying to imagine them co-parent Neo would be very funny as well. <laughs> <laughs> She's had too much ice cream. She can have more. Oh, God. I was going to say, who's going to spoil her in that situation? <laughs> have a nice day, think... Park, sweetie, and remember an eye for an eye. Yeah. <laughs> I, I feel like it would be... A, a tie between the two of them as far as like spoiling just because Roman would be like he would have the whole background of Neo and like she can't do this blah 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 and then Tyrion would be like oh come on a little murder never hurt anybody <laughs> oh, you're right it killed him it didn't hurt him <laughs> uh, okay um let's see here we got a few left that are kind of getting well we got two questions that are the exact same that i just realized so True. jared good lord jared hoyler and hannah henry both asked what got you introduced into ruby um i uh, randomly came across it when i was having a not so great spell of days with depression then i mm -hmm. the only thing like i ever saw with rooster teeth was red versus blue and then randomly the on the spot with meg turney ashley jenkins barbara dunkelman and Lindsay came up so then in the suggested was ruby and then i binged through all of it up to where Right when the episode where Yang breaks uh, breaks Mercury's leg and then it cut. And I was like, where's the rest of it? What's going on? What, <laughs> <laughs> what, yeah, what is this? Of Zuko. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then that, that was it for me. And I've been on the train since. And that's when I found out you were watching, Ruby. Yeah, you, you randomly must, came you must, have, you must have binged it like the week before I came over to hang out. It was because he randomly came in the house and wearing a sweatshirt and he goes, when did that happen? I was like, that's Ruby Hoodie. I watched that show. Uh, no, so to keep a, what could be an extremely long story short, um, I was watching um, Let's Play back when they were just on Rooster Teeth's channel. Because uh, back in the day, I used to watch a lot of Minecraft Let's Plays. And um, so I watched a Minecraft series and uh, yeah, the red trailer came out and I remember watching it and being like, this looks like the coolest video game ever made <laughs> and i just wanted to get my hands on it and it was like you know whatever the next trailer was coming soon and i was like what is this anyway it turned out to be a web series obviously and i've been with ruby since day one so brag about it Shut up. Yeah, God. <laughs> how about you, you summer oh me first mm -hmm. uh so i can't remember exactly i know i was on twitter and i happened to see a twitter about uh, the red trailer coming up and I was only really watching Rooster Teeth for Red vs. Blue and some other stuff so I saw RWBY and I was like is this a Red vs. Blue thing? <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> I was really trying to figure out what does W and Y stand for though? <laughs> <laughs> but you know kind of kept tabs on that and then I think they did like a little sneak peek picture Okay. and I think mm -hmm. it was like that like first shot of Ruby and I am big into fairy tale stuff. So that's all it really took for me. And then I saw the trailer. I was like, I want to watch this little redheaded girl shooting at these wolves. I need this. <laughs> that's nice. kind of all it took for me. Mm -hmm. Um, mine's kind of slightly similar in regards to what Ty mentioned. Um, I actually didn't get into Ruby immediately. Um, I was exposed to Red versus Blue back in high school, and a lot of my friends at lunch were really into it. I wasn't really into it because I wasn't big on Halo, and to a degree, I still am not. Red versus Blue is the closest that I will ever get to Halo, and I'm happy with that. Um, but I got introduced to it uh, 
when I first saw the trailer and everything, just about graduation, give or take, from college, and I didn't watch it immediately. I thought about it. I just had a lot going on because working, so on and so forth. And when I finally got into it, it was about maybe almost two months before Monty passed away. And I, mm -hmm. I, I admit I was a little bit late on that, but one of the things that I was a big fan of in high school was Monty and Dead Fantasy, Hayloid, and I wasn't I was rewatching Dead Fantasy and then saw the recommendation for Ruby and got started there. And then a few months later, he passed away. Yeah, that was the same for me. I found out that Monty passed away because of Death Battle. Yeah, yeah that it's yeah. And then I had to go backwards <laughs> through all of that, and I was just. And then <laughs> I immediately like marathoned everything after he passed away and then it was like okay and then they made the announcement for volume three and it was like i can wait i can do this i'm going to continue watching i will say though i wasn't I have, i've been with it since day one but i wasn't entirely sold at first i mm -hmm. almost uh i i was pretty sold um during the the fight with the nevermore where ruby takes on the nevermore mm -hmm. but oh, during the Weiss John like character arcs, I was kind of like, this is just all very trivial. <laughs> now everyone misses that. Yeah. <laughs> that sneak peek, well, not sneak peek. I have interesting. I've watched like four or five interviews with um, Weiss. Well, with Weiss, good lord, Kara Everly and um, Aaron Beck. <laughs> And my favorite thing between them is whenever um, Kara mentions that her favorite ship is her and John, and Aaron will, <laughs> and Aaron will berate her, saying, "You had your chance and you shut him down." <laughs> I I can appreciate that. All right, so I just did one. I believe it's back to. Did you go after me, Summer, or was it you, Sam? I went. It was it was me, but I gave it up to Summer. Just because oh, I couldn't want, pick a question. Do you want right. to go or? Um, I'm. Do you want to do John Ken Pond to decide? I have no preference. All right. You. <laughs> John, what? Whenever she leaves, her, her, whenever her, whenever her, Salem her. leaves to look at the document, her screen, her screen goes weird. completely black. <laughs> <laughs> that probably <laughs> happens when we're doing it, but I don't know that because it just keeps going us. I hard. mean, I, I know <laughs> I know what question I want to pick. If oh. uh, Go ahead. Well, okay. Uh, this is from Arthur. 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 Uh, Morgan. Arthur. I have a plan, Arthur. <laughs> Arthur. He basically asked the same thing, so I'm going to go with the one I'm looking at, though. Uh, what do you hope to see in Volume 7? Um, my mind just went. I I would sure like, like to see them Ruby girls. Sexual tendency. Um okay. I, I I could just go on and say what I'm excited for. I Same would here. they they've said what I was gonna say I was excited for. They said that they're going to obviously show very good reasons for why they have new outfits. They said they're actually going to show that this time. They didn't the last time, which I'm not like, the girls change your clothes. Why didn't you say so? <laughs> um, then it's just, I, what I would like to see, and we probably won't be, and they've mentioned why in the after fall book, they fought stuff that weren't grim. Mm -hmm. I would oh. like, like I would yes. like to see stuff like that, but they opened that Miles and Carrie have both said that they don't. I'm sorry, I'm not going to say what it is, but they fight stuff that's not grim. I'm sorry for anyone that read the book, I'm not going to say what it is. But Miles and Carrie have said they were able to do stuff in that book that they can't do in the show for budgetary reasons. Mm -hmm. So it's that is one thing, but I from what we saw at the end of. If you have not seen through volume six, I am extremely sorry. Turn spoilers. Around. Turn around. Everywhere. Spoilers. 
<laughs> like they Everywhere. show that um, Atlas is insanely f looking like futuristic, at least. I would like to see a good portion of that being different because obviously it's got money plugged into it from the scenes and stuff like that. And also, I would <laughs> like to see a conscious effort to show how Weiss isn't just blown out in public immediately. Like, not, like, sh shown, why sneeze right there? I just want to show how they're a good way if they just don't, like, walk down the street and then no one just goes. <laughs> <laughs> but I, that's, and then Jacques is called immediately. Like, I want to know. Look, she has just scar. She'll just hold it up a little and hide herself. She's just going <laughs> to honeycomb herself inside of that. She's got a braid. Ponytail. That can't be worse. <laughs> It's tilted to the other side now. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's why her gives a red now instead of blue. But we'll never know. Yeah, it's just <laughs> I don't know. It's it's the simple stuff that everyone's gonna say bees moments, and it's there's nothing specific because I really don't know how they're gonna show it. But other than what they've said, that just a little bit. So I'll shut up because I'm rambling. Oh, you're good. Uh, no, yeah, what am I hoping to see in Volume 7? I would like to see Penny. Penny! Or Dimes? I would love... <laughs> or should I, I say quarters? quarters? I was gonna say it's um, quarters, there's... I'll have you know... Yeah, no, I would love to see Penny again. I, I obviously, obviously, if they did redid her, I don't think she'd have all... Meet right Penny's now. dad. You'd rather meet Mr. Pauline? I, I would, I would hey, like, because well, they, no, they I, talk about who her dad no, is. That'd yeah, cool, no, yeah. I don't... And, I, you know, I'd like to, if like like to find out if you know she was just an artificial aura or if it was you know somebody else's aura that they put into her but yeah essentially yeah i'd like to see her back i don't think she would have her original memories of ruby or anything which would obviously be a bit upsetting but you know that's how i see it going so salem <laughs> <laughs> you guys don't get to decide um, anymore i'm in charge here <laughs> aye aye captain ty um, <laughs> So, one of the things, and they made this announcement, and it was confirmed not too long ago. Um, in a tweet, Samantha Ireland confirmed that we're going to get Nora backstory oh, yeah. in Volume 7. Um, that was something that I was not necessarily expecting, but after having that announcement, I'm intrigued, and I'm also kind of hopeful for that. Um, because we'll I have theories, later. yeah, I, I have theories and and feels and thoughts, and I have a theory that is completely long, and I am not going to talk about this because everybody Ooh. will hate me by the end of it, mm, and it's maybe it's my like, theory. <laughs> I don't know. He said Anywho, things. I didn't um, sleep. <laughs> well, we'll talk later. Okay. Not not on live because not that here. would take up too much time. That's fair. Um. But one of the things that I was hoping for, and they already made this announcement at RTX, was we're going to be getting prehistoric or mesoteric grim. I'm quite excited Atlas, about that. Which, if you've seen all the grim that we have had mm -hmm. so far, and the fact that we're now going like prehistoric and mesoteric and so on and so forth, like saber tooth grim, which is. Yeah, that's all I'm gonna say. I, I was gonna say you caught. Yeah. <laughs> Me? Okay. Yep. Uh, so obviously I want to see some of the reasons behind the new looks. Like definitely Blake's shorter hair, just because in most mm -hmm. media what that tends to mean. Um, yep. I really do want to see Penny's dad because they kind of like gave you that small glimpse of him. At like what was it volume hairline. three? That was like all you got. Like yeah. know more about him. <clears throat> kind of like what was mentioned before, where her aura came from. I kind of want to see if they'll kind of explain aura more in that. I know they said something about semblance mm -hmm. was going to be talked about more, or like mm -hmm. why people have similar ones and all that. Okay. So maybe that will kind of be connected there. Um, I also am really wanting to see more Maria. That's my yeah. biggest yep. I can agree with that. I need more of her. She's great. <laughs> Horizon Zero she Granny is. became one of my favorite characters quickly. <laughs> I'm just hoping uh, our new pro VA knocks it out of the park. Oh, yeah. See, of course, I mean, but, like, I've I've heard his voice work as Dobby and other characters and stuff. I think he'll do a pretty good job, to be honest. I, I think so, too. Um, 
I just like that we have Bishamon and um, Yato now. <laughs> yeah, that's all I'm going to imagine. <laughs> I'm imagining that, and then there's also the thing that I had heard very briefly, and I haven't been able to find solid evidence, but apparently he and Elizabeth Maxwell are actually dating, so they go to conventions together. They do. They, they do. do. They went to Daishokan together. Yeah, yeah. exactly. They, so, we were so mad. Yeah, we, <laughs> yeah, we were so mad. So, we went to so, Daishokan, so, got 10 feet from him, and then we're like, don't know nothing about him. I'm here for Ruby autographs. We're gonna leave. Yeah, he comes now in. we're here. He comes in and they're like, Are you ready to go on? He's like, so, Oh no, no, it's fine. I just went to get coffee. You guys finish up. And we were like, Okay. Mm -hmm. So Snowbird Cannon, maybe <laughs> possibly. I hope. Yes. I hope. <laughs> oh my god, gross face. I need that, but please. Just just make it happen. <laughs> it's gonna start doing Joe Star poses. <laughs> yeah, this, this is why I can work wait, with wait, your wait, that's what I would make happen. <laughs> On to the next question. Oh um, okay. Next question. <laughs> Let's see. Um, so we talked about what do you hope to see in volume seven? Fa another one from Arthur Morgan was any guesses as to what might happen in volume seven? We'll see some fighting. <laughs> we'll see some so... <laughs> Crow's gonna be there. No major characters it's gonna be a magical line. wonderland of uh, snow and murder. Lots of guns. But mostly, no. lots, lots of guns, lots of swords, lots of scythes. Guns um, Hi, V. I see you. Um, for my input on that one, I would like to think that we might learn a little bit more about how Atlas functions as a kingdom. Um, we got the backstory, obviously, from World of Renman in regards to Vale, Mistral, Vacuo, and Atlas, but um, I would be intrigued if we get a little bit more backstory, which I'm hoping we might get because of them now being an Atlas. I'm okay with that. Um, what, one thing, it was right there. It was, <laughs> it was right had, there. And <laughs> I turned it into right. Danny. It's not here anymore. Uh, it, My it's apologies. Legit, it's legit go home, gone. Guys. You we, go. We it's can it's legit go gone. And <laughs> some... Keep going. Um. Okay, I'll go. Uh, <laughs> so kind of just going off of the kind of pattern Ruby has, I think we'll definitely have more development towards what this arc's going to go for. So we'll probably get introduced to how Atlas works. We might get some talk of Weiss's family. I don't think we'll see that just yet. That might be next volume stuff. Um, and I'm sure, like, the main goal, though, is trying to get to Ironwood. I feel like that might be, like, end Thank idea you. there. <laughs> <laughs> Was that what you were thinking? Yes. That's kind no. of what I'm expecting, volume seven. Exactly. Um, I don't know if what? we'll see him, but, but I hope we do because I miss him. Yeah, I, I can't think of anybody I, I who that. doesn't miss Iron Daddy. <laughs> Thank you. I wanted to say it. <laughs> <laughs> I can call him Iron Daddy too. Going on. <laughs> um. Okay. So, um, one thing that I do want to see is if. Ironwood goes full nuts like he was looking at getting when he was talking about the argument that him and Jacques were having. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. And so we'll see. I want to see if he goes full nuts or not. So I um, <clears throat> I mean, not that it's been confirmed or anything and that I'd be interested in saying, I guess. Um, <laughs> has been confirmed, but I've seen a lot of an awful lot of teasing by Aaron uh, primarily that we're going to have an Atlas ball. <gasps> oh, yes! right. So, but I mean, again, it's all speculation, and they like doing that to us. But uh, you know, nothing's been confirmed. But I would, I wouldn't mind another dance arc. I guess I don't know if we we're <laughs> overdue for a masquerade a party. Yeah. Thing. We're moving past term the arc. Now we have dance arcs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be good, and I, I what again? Well, going back to what I would want to see, I would really like Gang to shut up 
or just like KO a racist anti bonus person. Do you mean Jacques? Or well, hey, I would well, like hey, to see Weiss do that. Gang can get anyone else. <laughs> or anyone. It's fine. Um all right. So it was yeah, then summer. Salem. Are you up next? Um, possibly. Yeah, it's crow. Okay. It's crow. Let's take a look at the questions. Did that, did that. That's not what we've done yet. Well, we'll I probably really end on that one. Talked about that. <laughs> that one we didn't do. We didn't do that one yet. Okay, I think we only have like, uh, really got like three. two or three questions left. Okay, though that's another one that's exactly the same as another question down here because I copied it twice. Hey <laughs> okay, all right. We basically have two questions left. Well, three left. Who is your daddy? All right. Wonder, <laughs> and and what does he do? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Manfred Orat, I probably butchered that. Hi, head cannon question here. If the White Fang is a group of faunist activists with extremist splinter groups, is there an equivalent group for humans, like a faction of human elitists, not unlike Card Winchester, who would see the faunist as little more than animals and are determined to emphasize the human superiority? Um, yes, they're called racists. <laughs> they're called the SDC. No, uh, yeah, yeah, no, SDC. but that's essentially my answer. I feel like uh, there's a lot of that that happens in the SDC based off of what we've uh, you know, just learned in the show or whatever, in the way mm -hmm. that, you know, Jacques talks about his labor and whatnot. So, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't doubt it. I don't know. I don't think per se we'll see any sects like that. I mean, I mean, you know, you'd see the occasional um, I, racist, fun assist, whatever on the show. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, no, I, don't, I mean, I, they probably exist in the world remnant. I don't think we'll ever see one though. But, hard to say. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you really, if there really even has to be a need for a basically human rights group. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> right? It's an, like, I'm sure well, they could I do mean, something cool with it, but... Right, I mean, but, yeah, I mean, not to progress the story, per se, because, I mean, like, what purpose would the... Yeah. No. You guys... I mean, like, basically, like, what was already said, I think that's basically just the racist mm -hmm. in Ruby. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we we get little bits here and there, especially for Atlas yeah, yeah. people. We'll probably see more people who might mm -hmm. have a dislike towards Blake being there. Yeah, but I I don't know if there'll be a group necessarily. I I kind of agree. Um, one thing to point out in regards to that is we do see a little bit of that discrimination in Mistral when Crow is looking for Huntsman and he's at the restaurant and bar and on the outside oh, yeah, of it, right. it says no Faunus. That is true. Um, I forgot about that. I think we're going to see more of that, but in Atlas, um, if there was, if there was a human rights group, um, I am going to take a guess that Jacques Schnee is the head of that. And that, <laughs> um, and hear me out for this. I I think that he would be the head for this because of the fact of his whole practice of using Faunus for <clears throat> labor for labor and everything. Um and I only think that in part because of that, but I also have a head canon that I have in regards to Nicholas Schnee, Weiss's grandfather. Oh yeah, yes, yes. I I since he's wearing the red scarf and his name is Nicholas Schnee, I I think that they based him off of Santa Claus. I'm, and I think that that reference is obvious there. And I think that when he started the Schnee Gut Dust Company and everything, he initially had faunus workers because he treated them like honest to God people. And then when Jacques married into the family and took over for the company, I feel like that's when everything went downhill and that I don't know if that's true or not, but that's just a wishful head cannon I have because it kind of would fit the idea of Santa Claus and his elves. And instead of actually having humans helping with this, it would make sense to have Faunus. And since he's nice to his elves and not a slave driver, that's just my thought. Okay. I can see that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> Um, okay, we've got two, um, 
we've really got two more questions left. Um, well, I take that back. I just three. No, that. notice the big yeah, one down yeah. there. Um, <laughs> do you, one is do you? Th I'll take this one. Do you think Oscar will be more competent in a fight without Ozpin taking over eventually? Can we point out Os Admin Oscar's answer to that earlier? <laughs> Oscar's a weekly. <laughs> well, I remember that. That was from sorry, Monica Valencia. I'm going to guess is that how I said? I forgot what she said. I, I who admin name, Oscar? I uh, yes. <laughs> oh, hold on. <laughs> admin Oscar commented on that saying, I can answer that. Uh, Oscar's a wimp. <laughs> <laughs> He's a farm boy. Give him some credit. You know. He'll get tough. Yeah. I mean, Osmond uh, didn't completely take over in the season five finale until after, you know, he had fought Lionheart for a while. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's true. And then when he realized that Hazel would have literally eaten him. Right. <laughs> Get down, Mr. President. <laughs> no, yeah. Um, I think Oscar has the very normal character arc of a uh, kid that literally just got pulled into this world that he really had no idea about too much. He was like he knew him. about <laughs> men and all that, but he wasn't going to school. He, he was a farm boy. Yeah. So he's obviously he's gonna do the whole <laughs> he's gonna do the whole progression of eventually <laughs> getting to be like a good fighter. I, that's kind of what I'm expecting. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking it will be before Ozpin gets redeemed. I think mm -hmm. he'll start to shine on his own before then. At least I hope. Yeah. I can agree with that. Yeah. Um, I can, It'll be interesting <laughs> to see if all the training that he went through with R Team Ranger when learning how to fight actually takes into effect. Like when we had the moment where um, Oscar headbutt Ruby in their match and then Ruby heads headbutts Mercury at a later point in volume five. Um, it would be interesting to see if there's any parallels between that match and anything that we see in the future. I would like to think that he is he could probably do better compared to how he has been previously. But since we didn't really see him fight in the whole stealing an airship to Atlas. That is true. I, it's one of those things where I it, we will just have to wait and see. All right. I'm good with that. Mm -hmm. All, right. All right. There is one question that I think you guys saw that we'll likely just save for the end. So if, if you two want to hit the last two questions, I believe we have the one on the bottom from Shane left. And then uh, uh, mm -hmm. where was the other one? From Freya. That'll be the last one we do because it's pretty obvious. Yeah. But go ahead. Um, Shane Herring's question is, do you think Pira is actually dead? Never in my heart. <laughs> So, if we're really going to get technical with this. <laughs> oh my god, Crow. You're going to stop right now. <laughs> cry. Sorry. Oh, now I got to cry. Another now it's cold without you here. <laughs> the heart. Um, That's a tongue about Monty. Oh. Uh, <laughs> It it can be applied. I mean, it it, it is a Monty <laughs> song, but yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Anywho, um, even though it here. has been said several times, even by it's it's been said by Jen, it's been said by everybody writing wise. Pura is unfortunately dead. <clears throat> um, however, I have a horrible theory of something that I would like to see someone do, whether it's in a fanfic, if it's written <laughs> well, or mm. I could easily see this being a thing maybe in the future. And this horrible <laughs> idea is potentially Pura coming back, but not being Pura. And I don't mean like bringing the dead to life. I mean like... Yeah. 
Kira's ashes scattered in the wind, as we have oh. seen, as we have seen with the whole thing, but with Ozma and Salem, Ozma had the whole thing happen with him, where he was being brought to life, then dying, being brought to life, and dying. I don't oh, want to see that happen with Pyrrha. I want to see her come back as a grim enemy or her being used to manipulate Jean into doing something. If I have to see Jean kill Pyrrha, I... I didn't say that, but you said it. You're leading his thinking, though. <laughs> I won't right say I won't yeah. say we haven't thought about it. Um, I also can't watch that scene with Ozma dying without seeing Patrick with the light switch. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, yes, exactly. Yes, exactly. Um, if we're gonna go by anime rules here, we didn't see a body, so whatever. She is dead, but can come back. You, mm -hmm. um, it there's gonna be the whole that do you believe in destiny line has to lead to something because if it doesn't, that's gonna irritate the bejesus out of me. Yeah, uh, you could you get it under control? Over it doesn't, it doesn't... <laughs> <laughs> um, I have freakish ears, okay? Okay, I have freakish oh. ears, <laughs> okay. Um, but welcome to the club, yeah. Eh. I I don't know. I would love, I'm a big fan of Poetic Justice, if somehow she came back and laid the royal smackdown on Cinder when she fights her without her having a dragon for backup. I just think that would be cool to see. But um, I don't know. If she pulled... Spoiler alert from anyone who's seen Gerlogan. Oh, boy. Like, oh. <laughs> Here it comes. Alexa, no. There. No. Stop it. I need to turn off every electrical device. My phone went nuts. <laughs> My Alexa's trying to turn on. Um, <laughs> there's a moment where Team Gern literally comes out of... Uh, Oh my gosh, her name just went blank. Mia. Mia. I was going to say, Mia's, they come out of her engagement ring, just out of the temporal zone, clean into her engagement ring and start wrecking house. I'm just like, I'd love to see something dumb like that. Like, I've had. Here it comes out of the shield. Yes. Thank you. You got right to it. Just somehow I mean, to be the fair, essence comes out. Carrie, Carrie is a big fan of that series, yeah, too. Yeah, I know. Yeah, That's yeah. why I'm saying it. <laughs> All of them have said they love Gurnlock, and all the voice actors, Miles, Carrie, all of them. I love it. See? Mm -hmm. God, to be fair, it's the just... spirit is indomitable. So. <laughs> <laughs> Don't hurt me. I'm helping you, Case. Bro, <laughs> I know. Bro, I know. I love your puns, <sighs> and they're going to be my forever fall. So the stream well, is this ending. Well, this would be the perfect stream. <laughs> <the> next question. <laughs> okay. Um, Salem's love is all. Does anyone have... What's that I see? It's the next question. <laughs> Does anyone um, have any other thoughts? Uh, so I, there has been a Tumblr post I saw. Like I do agree. I think Pyrrha's dead. I don't think she's coming back as much as I would love to see her again. Uh, there is a Tumblr post that compares a lot of her stuff with Ozma stuff. Mm -hmm. Salem's probably seen it. She's a Tumblr lover. Um, <laughs> I can't remember how exactly sets it up, but like there's the whole talk with her and Ozpin being similar to Ozma in the God of Lights conversation. How there's like yep. no hesitation to her taking that decision there. And they kind of compare the way mm -hmm. she disappeared being similar to Ozma. To be fair, we haven't seen a lot of other characters die yet, so we don't really know if there's any difference there. Sure. Mm-hmm. I mean, at least not that way. I mean, we've seen, mother, so... we've seen Pyrrha don't, die. Get, don't, you know, so, don't. So, we saw Penny. Don't, so, get but, me and we started. saw Roman get eaten. But we haven't seen <laughs> others turn into the dust. Like, we have those two yet. To be, to be fair, we didn't see how that Griffin, like, <laughs> went number two. So we don't know if it was <laughs> dust. <laughs> I mean, Roman could have literally just came out from... Language. So... <laughs> they get the hat you back. I'm just it. saying. They get the hat no. back. <laughs> no, Neil, Neil <laughs> the hat. At least that part's clean. 
Unless it flew off of his head just before the griffin ate him. Um, <laughs> which, that could very well be it. Um, since Crow mentioned it, one thing I want to clarify, and I know a lot of people have actually said it's Pyrrha's mom in regards to the woman at the grave mark, which I'm inclined to agree. But in the credits, they credit her as red-haired woman. Yeah, they don't specify who she is. And I so, to, to go on with that, I, I want to say it was at the RTX panel. I want to say, or it was something that they said otherwise, where they're, I don't think they said that they said they're never going to mention who she is, but mm -hmm. they're relying on fans to put the pieces together to who that actually was. Mm -hmm. Like just using comments. I can't remember exactly how it was, but I want to say it was Carrie that, cause it was on a Tumblr post, a quote from Carrie, but mm -hmm. just, they feel like they don't need to say who that person was. And then Jen Brown on a um, on a stream of hers said that she was allowed to say that it's not Pyrrha. It's not a reincarnation of her. It has mm -hmm. nothing to do with Pyrrha as a person as being Pyrrha. So mm -hmm. now everybody can say, well, they could just be lying. And, well, they couldn't be. So we don't know. <laughs> All exactly. right. So, on to the last question, <coughs> if you would like to read that off, Salem. Hold on one second, I've got to close the thing again. <laughs> Away she goes! What would you do for a Klondike bar? You don't want to know what I would do for a Klondike bar. Um, <laughs> we don't want to know what Salem well, would do for one. let's try to extreme PG-13 yeah. right at least. Exactly. Oh, um, they would create eat flying monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> what it has. Well, that's our, a little... Our last question is from Freya Wigham. What would be your ideal ending for the show in terms of Salem, Ozpin, the girls, and the other villains? So, Neela and Blake get married and adopt oh, yeah. a little... <laughs> so, yeah, Blake and Yang get married and adopt a little girl named <laughs> Neela. Uh, I'm not spouting fan fiction that we've written, <laughs> but no. Um, okay. uh, I... Uh, what I what I think is going to happen, we mentioned. I honestly think they went out of their way to say that Ozpin can't defeat her. They said you can't, and then they've said the Silver Eyes only works on Grim. We saw that she got Grimified over time after she jumped into the pool, and mm -hmm. that the whole big thing is that when the gods come back, she has to prove worth, pretty much. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's going to happen, but a big part of me thinks that the grim half of her is going to get silver eyed clean out. I don't know if Ruby's going to die doing it or what. Right. But hard to say how that would teach her the value in death per se. But... I, I don't know either, but I just think right. that that's going to no, be some I, part I of it. I, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> and again, we're talking about gods that literally played light switch with Ozma in front of her. <laughs> so I don't know what their moral high ground is. <laughs> Can we can we talk about the fact that they were acting like children and playing with the light switch? You guys completely just tried to attack us and failed miserably. You're gonna murder all of you. So I'm gonna murder you all and laser and beam the earth room. as a, and laser beam the moon as I walk out. Yeet. So peace. You don't get no cool moon. This, this planet is empty. Yeet. Yeet. <laughs> I'm gonna All right. So that's my answer. I'd said, about, that's, I kind of said it earlier when I was trying to get Mer Ty was trying to get me whatever. What Ty was I'll to censor me it. To, it's okay. Ty was trying to get me to wait earlier. <laughs> I want him to. I want him to censor it out with like a bird squawking. <laughs> <laughs> so just censor it out with. I can, I turn to do a bird. <laughs> I can turn to do a bird. Uh, anyway, no. Um, yeah, no. I think. <laughs> I think we'll be able to purge out uh, the destructive force in Salem. Uh, I'd like to think that Ospin and uh, Oscar will be separated. Um, I, I mean, in terms of relationships and stuff, like, I don't know. Obviously, you want them all to live happily ever after. Uh, <laughs> um, though I'm one of those people where this might be getting a bit off topic, where I hope that Ruby doesn't end up with anybody. 
like Ruby saying. the character or team yeah, Ruby? No, no, no. Ruby, Ruby okay. the character. Ruby Rose from <laughs> um, Orange is the New Black. Yeah. He's Ruby, really hoping. Ruby to, Rose, just... Batwoman. Uh, no, no. Um, Ruby, Ruby Rose the character, I'm hoping, is, uh, you know, just doesn't end up with a, a partner or whatever. I don't, I, I don't know all the terms like you kids do. You, you hope she doesn't end up in with Canada together romantic? with anybody right, at the end right, of the show. Right. That's fair. What about you, Summer? Okay. Um, I'll, so, I'll give my input after, but what 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 about you? Um. So kind of it's already been said. I do think that we're gonna get the final confrontation kind of set up with finally getting to Salem. I don't know if necessarily Ruby will reach out to her, or if it will also come down to Oscar slash Ozpin having some influence there, because, you know, she has to learn her lesson or something. I do think somehow they're going to get separated. I don't think Oscar is going to lose himself. Mm -hmm. I think we'll get teased with it a lot. Okay. But I'm pretty sure we're going to get a pretty good, happy ending. Somehow, the gods might come back. Salem might get purified or just be made to go away forever. Who knows? And maybe Ruby's actual final confrontation will be her talking to the gods themselves. Because we know Ruby's pretty good about talking when it comes down to how she feels. She's come to bargain. <laughs> yes, she's going to bargain with the time stone. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> he moved. Keep going. Coming back in a moment to bargain. Just keep talking. Uh, <laughs> no, don't want I that dead air. I, I guess I my ideal is more his daughter. stuff. Uh, I'd like to see Ruby continuing being a huntress because I really do think that's what she wants to do. Yeah. Uh, Blake, maybe she'll go back home and kind of do more Faunus related stuff. I don't know. What that I'm really not is. saying I've come oh, to bargain, but I've come to bargain. <laughs> <laughs> so is that a very special type of dust? Just asking. Special type of du dust? Dust? Yeah, he couldn't hear you till the headphones were back in. He wasn't know that's been kind of dust. Um, time dust. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> we have gravity. Why not? I'm still waiting for, like, on the wiki, well, related to that, anyway, on the wiki, I don't know who put it there, I don't even know if it's true, probably not, is the fact that Ozpin's cane stores time. Yeah. Somebody put that on the wiki forever oh. ago. I don't know that it's true. I don't remember it being confirmed by anyone, but I'm just saying, I mean, it's just something did, I read. Didn't one of That's the how he gets his housework done. Represented with clocks? Didn't one yeah. of them with clocks? Maybe that's a thing? Maybe. Anyway, mm -hmm. Anywho. Maybe, maybe that's Ozpin's thing, but not, not Ozma's thing. Yeah, maybe. Okay, that's that fair. could be. Not yeah. to get too far off topic. Yeah. But um, going a different route for ideal ending, uh, what about Oscar just straight up dying <laughs> and that being a shock to, of course, Ruby and maybe they will affect Salem because she'll be seeing how dramatized Ruby is by it. You know, you it's just so dark, even mm -hmm. though I really love Oscar. That That's a thought I hadn't considered. Um, so I have several different thoughts um, and several different theories. So to make it short, I'm not going to talk about one that I initially thought because I kind of don't want it to happen. And that was... If she speaks it, it'll be so... Yes. Anything Salem speaks, it becomes canon. No, um, no <laughs> let's see. Um, adopted. What? <laughs> the one thing I want to point out in regards to all of Ozma's incarnations is that probably Oscar is the closest to resembling Ozma. They have the same voice actor and everything. That's weird. <laughs> Get your out of here. Their names start with an O. Oh, oh, oh. What a perfect little. Wait, Oscar Pine? Ozpin? What? <laughs> this is a conspiracy, guys. Um, so I, I would like to. Th I don't. 
in regards to the whole you cannot defeat Salem, I feel like it's going to come to the task where it it's going to be Team Ruby and anyone else who is helping with this task as far as like fighting Salem and Salem's legion of grim and villains. So basically um, Avengers Endgame battle? I did not see Endgame. I know about stuff. Um, okay, spoilers are allowed now. <laughs> I, I know I, that's I, not I, your I, plan. I will. I will spoil Ruby. I won't spoil Endgame. That's, yeah, that's fair. Um, Same. but how I think it's going to potentially end, I think we're going to see maybe Ruby Silver Eyes have an effect on Salem. Whether it's actually cure, curing her of all the grim or not, I don't know. The thing I want to know because we see a drastic change from how Salem was in the flashback versus how she is now. I want to know what language. Sorry. <laughs> Whoa. Add bird squawk <laughs> at. <laughs> this is the PG-13 stream and you ruined it. Actually, you know, PG-13 movies, they're allowed one. We're allowed one. One F-bomb. So I, we're still okay. I, so I spoiled the one, one F-bomb. I'm sorry, guys. Um, <laughs> that was the one. If we could put it anywhere, that would be where we put it. <laughs> I want to know what the frick happened between her then that made her how she is now. Like, is is she taking annual dips in the pools of Grimm? Is that a, an effect of it? Or, or is how this... Else she keep <laughs> that good of, or how else did she keep her pores that clean? It was that jello <laughs> in the ooze, <laughs> the oozy jacuzzi. I mean, Grimm ooze, that's how I get my skin nice and smooth. Um, in the oozy ah, jacuzzi. Ooze. Mommy salami took a dip in the oozy <laughs> That's my Something. nickname now in a bunch of group chats. Oh, um, <laughs> yes. Thanks, um, <laughs> but I feel like we're going to... I kind of want to see the God Summon, but I kind of hope that we don't get that because as we are now, I feel like they would obliterate all of humanity. Um, depending on how we get to that point and how humanity stands, that could be a determining factor. To whether they obliterate it or not. If Ruby does talk to them, I would be interested to see that. Um, as far as ending wise with Ozma, I'm hoping that he is successful in his task so that way he can rest because that boy is tired. Um, <laughs> I, with Salem, I feel like even if we do it goes back to the whole immortality thing. Like you'd have to do a lot of work to try to change her point of view, which is, it can be possible over time, but at the same time, I feel like it wouldn't be an immediate thing. Although what I would kill to see is if she still has like feels over her daughters and everything, because I'm just like imagining her seeing Team Ruby and, like, thinking maybe there's some resemblance to her daughters, not necessarily in a facial point of view, but, like, maybe because it's four girls. No, yeah. one, no one here is going along with, and I don't, so I wouldn't be upset with anyone that did. I've seen a thing end pretty generally lately that for the first four volumes or so, ever since the World of Remnant artwork came out that everyone's like, you know, if you look really closely at the way their faces are drawn, that you'll see that all the members of Team Rumi are gonna become maidens. Cause their That's eyes the theory are I was similar. thinking about earlier. <laughs> <laughs> That's the exact theory I was thinking about earlier. And the other, the other reason I was thinking that was if you look at when the trailers were dropped, they were dropped at different seasons of the year. Fair point. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye, Felicia. But the only reason I'm not a fan of that now is with Ruby having silver eyes. I feel like if she had maiden powers on top of it, it might be a little bit too OP for me. Yeah. 
Look, the only one I think could be capable of becoming a maiden is Gang, just because of her mom. But I really That's don't true. see the any of them maybe becoming a maiden. I feel like the maidens are still something separate. What? If, what well, if, on the topic of maidens, I like the fact that someone online proposed. They were like, you know, the spring and fall maidens hated each other. What if the summer and winter maidens are madly in love with each other? I was like, yes, yeah, <laughs> please, please. One thing I really want is for somehow for for Willow to be the winter maiden who just gave up on life and is drinking in a garden somewhere going, y'all deal with it, I'm done. <laughs> Especially since we established that Raven is a maiden, that, that gives us an idea about the whole thing with age. Um, although, especially... I would be interested in that because then I have this horrible thought that... Ironwood, if he knows the identity of the maiden, Ironwood assigning Winter to watch over the Winter Maiden, who is her mom. <laughs> and Winter's like, why are you doing this to me? Do you ever have nice fluffy theories that aren't like dark and... Her name is Salem! Oh, my bad. <laughs> she okay, either thanks. has evil thoughts with Grimm or she's making snotty comments to Sabrina as a cat. Oh, sorry. No He's, not okay. He's not wrong. He's <laughs> not wrong. He's not wrong. I'll take my bad jokes and sit in my chair. Thank you. <laughs> and he did. All right. Um, <laughs> He's a regular chip I'm, off the old block, there, isn't this he? This is the same room where I'm not. Yeah, this is the same. I, I used to like you. The same. I'm not <laughs> saying we're Sorry, a really guys, good representation the of the two characters. Canceled. But we're a pretty good representation of Crow and Ty. I I can agree with this. Okay, so um, any other mm. thoughts, really? Okay, I got I got it. I got it. I know how the show is gonna end. With credits. How's it gonna end? Wait, what? With credits. <laughs> Wait, does it end with credits and a final song? To wrap it all up. Is it, can it can they play it's the end of the Obviously, world as we know it? Uh no, I'd be read like Rose Part Three. There. Finally. Fine. She's never gonna get a song again. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> it, it's, it's Weiss, gotten, like, Weiss and Yang have gotten like fifteen. I'm not saying Red Light Roses 2 is my favorite song. But I am saying that Red Light Roses 2 is my favorite song. So all right, but for real, any other thoughts <laughs> that we haven't stated? Because we're approaching on an hour and 20 minutes now. Yep. <laughs> uh, nope. Not that I can think of. All right. That well. Was the same character. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what did you say? Favorite character. Favorite character. <laughs> oh, we can do that. I guess it's one last question. My favorite character, I still, I would say, is Pira. So. I don't think it's going to really change. The ice cream life. <laughs> <laughs> what a surprise. I, I'm I'm not surprised. What about you, Summer? Uh, so, it, I, I guess I have two. Because my favorite character is Crow, ever since he got introduced. But Maria might still his place, because, man, do I love her character. <laughs> she is just great. <laughs> Hard tie with the waitress, am I right? Come on. Obviously. The one episode, she was really good. Best, best character. Best okay. girl. Top shelf girl. <laughs> Top shelf girl block. with all the right alcohols. <laughs> I know where you were thinking I was going with that. Um, my favorite <laughs> character... You're my, you're my back. Go ahead. My favorite character since being introduced has always been Coco. And I, I have a lot of favorites. Um, I almost have reached a point where I have to categorize like which is my favorite from which team or which is my favorite from which moment. Um, Coco's been a favorite of mine and I like the fact that she's got a Gatling gun and then getting all the information we got from her in after the fall and all the potential information we might get in the sequel to After the Fall next year. 
because they announced at RTX we are getting a sequel book called Before the Dawn. The Dawn of what? Well, initially, from the title, uh, <laughs> people had thought that it was going to be centered around Team Sun, but at the Ruby, after the fall panel, they announced that it was actually going to be a collaboration between Team Sun and Team Coffee. Nice. Nice. Also, not a shameless bug. Bug, good lord. I'm tired. Shameless plug. If you Bugs. like Coco, read either of the fan fictions because that's one of his favorite characters to write. <laughs> <laughs> no, just just a it's just a tiny bit of Coco in there. It just this is lot, yeah. A tiny bit of Coco. Just a just a dash. Yeah. With her Chanel. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying really hard to come up with Mambo number five here, but that's gonna come up with a, <laughs> a that that's good. That's gonna that's gonna be a topic a for another cool. conversation. We don't need to go for an hour and a half. A yeah. All right. Yeah. So, <laughs> all right. Everybody that did this with me was awesome. This was fun. I do not know. Sorry, you just were here. I, that's true. But... <laughs> um, it was a lot of fun. I will over the week get this edited. I don't know when it will be. But I will have this uploaded on my actual YouTube channel. And then I'll actually upload it as a video to the channel as well. Edited mm -hmm. with other stuff to it with like the questions and other things. Pictures. So Diagram. yes, many of that. Ah. Maybe Censorship. Characters. <laughs> yes. Censorship. <laughs> Lots of it. Um, so yeah. Thank you, everybody. Normally, when I did, I used to do an Arrowverse TV show and... I used to do movie reviews with a buddy, Mike of mine. We're going to, at the end of each show, I guess, plug what we're doing otherwise. Like one or two things. I will just let him cover what that is because I make crack videos and AMV is badly, badly on my Feel YouTube channel. So <laughs> Help me. what are you up to? Oh, you know, just reading some fan fiction. <laughs> Sorry, it was a serious. Uh, uh, just you know, some fan fiction over on fanfiction. Uh, dot net. Is it dot net? Yes, dot it's net. still dot, dot net. net. Okay. Yeah, fanfiction.net dot fanfiction dot net or uh, archive of our own dot org. Tokyo no. three dot. Is that dot org? It, Boy, I don't. They're just in my. They're just something. in my address bar. I don't even look anymore. <laughs> That's where we'll, we'll, we'll start over the shameless plug in a second here. It's not the way you it's, enter it in. You're not the way you enter it in. I mean, I'm pretty sure that's not. Oh, that works. That's Nailed cool. it! Okay, I don't know you could do it that way. Uh, <laughs> all right, over. So uh, over at fanfiction.net or uh, archive of our own .org, you can find um, mine and Ty's story, uh, stories, I should say. Um, we had Operation Nightshade, which is completely finished. Um, it's light on OCs and heavy on time travel. Uh, <laughs> maybe that's not a good thing to say. But, yeah. It's kind of spoilery. Anyway. Uh, anyway. anyway um, censorship. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm bad. Censorship. Okay. All right. Uh, it's, okay, it's light on OCs and uh, explores a uh, alternate universe where Ruby dies um, at her wedding. Ooh. And then we have um, another story called Team Night, which is uh, plan to be a four-year project, four-year being the story itself, four years, um, and that rolls around uh, Blake and Yang's adopted daughter, Neela, uh, taking care of, you know, threats like the white thing and stuff. Mm -hmm. so those can be found on uh, Silent Celica is the artist name over on uh, Archive or Fan Fiction. Sayla? Well, I... I don't have a lot of fan fiction to promote because I only have a Harry Potter fan fiction that is available on fanfiction.net and a start of a slight crossover fan fiction between Mushishi and Inuyasha because I haven't published my Ruby fan fiction yet. I mostly dabble in crack drabbles um, because that <clears throat> started as a prank between two other admins for a page that I am also a part of because crack ship and shenanigans and April fools. Um, but what I've been working on 
as I posted a while back, I do like to cosplay. I like to make costumes. I like to thrift mm -hmm. costumes and so on and so forth. I am actually currently working on making a dress for a costume contest entry. And I am hoping that when they release the Kraken of sign up tomorrow, that it does not become a bloodbath and that I actually get in. But for aside Andy from, K. yep, for NDK. Cool. <laughs> I, I'm going to a convention that's a favorite of mine called NDK or Nondiscon. Um, and it's it's a favorite of mine for a lot of reasons. That are cool and I'm not going to get into that. But I'm working on that. And I also am thinking of maybe actually starting streaming in the fall. Cool. And your um, cosplay name? My cosplay name is Crazy Lady Cosplay. I am... And you can find me on Facebook. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. I also have a link tree, which you can find on both Twitter and Instagram and maybe Facebook. I am not 100% sure. Um, Twitter might be a little bit harder to find me because I still have my old username and mm -hmm. haven't switched it over. But if you just search Crazy Lady Cosplay, there I am. All right. All right. Summer. Summer. Um, so outside of this, I actually... I mean, I do cosplay, but I'm not big into promoting myself for that. That's for fun. I like to take cosplay photos, though. And I do like to do a lot of artwork, which I've been getting back into doing. I haven't done it for a while. And I also like to do uh, plush making. I'm actually doing some for a crow and a ruby for mm -hmm. another admin of our group, actually, Raven. Nice. They're going to both be birds. Nice. <laughs> it's something I'm working on in the moment. Um, my usual handle is Ray Sketch It. And I'm on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. But there's not really much to follow me for Twitter. I hardly ever use it except for looking at other people's updates. All right. Cool, cool. Everybody, thanks again. I don't know how often we'll do these. Probably I'm going to guess once a month. Something like that wouldn't be too bad. But thank you, everybody, for coming. And you'll see this when it gets edited. Bye-bye. Stay glassy. Toodaloo. Bye. -bye. Toodaloo. Bye.